Hi, I will be sharing some of the enhancing features of Types you are likely to notice when using it as a LaTeX user. I would not go as far as to say Types is way better because of them, but they certainly make you appreciate it more. Defaults. Packages. Many packages are needed to do common things without struggle. For example, margins, images, tables, colors, headers, footers, dates, dummy text, emojis, and glyph support in general. Pretty much all needed comes bundled within the Types compiler. Paper. The default paper size is primarily set to letter. The default paper size is set to A4. Font size. The default font size measures in at 10 points. When using the default document clusters, you can only change it to 11 or 12 points. The commands from backslash tiny all the way up to backslash huge also cause the font size to change, but it feels like the unintended way. The default font size measures in at 11 points. There are no font size restrictions and pools to my knowledge. Greek letters. The defaults for some commonly used letters of the Greek alphabet are questionable. For example, their variations backslash far epsilon and backslash far phi are more descriptive rather than pragmatic. Quite a few of the defaults for some commonly used letters of the Greek alphabet are made shorter than their later counterparts. For example, epsilon and phi are made to be variations. Table of contents. Requires you to add hyperref package if you want to have a clickable table of contents. Defaults to a clickable outline. For the removal of link, modify it using a show rule as documented in the corresponding types to web page, so you would be left with this. Syntax. Minimal document. All LaTeX documents come with three lines of boilerplate code before you can get started. You can start typing right away, unless you of course want the same defaults as in LaTeX. Commands and functions. Commands have some sort of structural uniqueness, specifically with placement of brackets and how many some command is prepared to take in. The functions all have a single pair of brackets, and their options come in a reasonably consistent form too. There is this thing though, where you can pass both code and markup modes to a function. Special characters. As many reserved special characters needing to be escaped. You won't run into many reserved special characters. I feel like this is mainly due to it being taken care of by each mode you use those characters in. Lists. Lists are contained inside the enumerate and itemized environments. The syntax for lists is simpler because it relies on indentation and prefixes. At the same time, you might not like that how they are visually aligned and plain text reflects how they appear in the output, especially if you're more of a test person. In my experience, that makes it harder to control whether a list should break to start a new one. But it's not a major dissatisfaction, and I believe there's continuous improvement being done on the topic. Typography. Basic formatting. All the ways of stylizing text at your disposal are often overwhelming, like how you can bold the text with backslash text bf, backslash bs series, or worse yet with backslash bf. The distinction between the first and the second is in the scope they affect. The third one is still included in LaTeX despite the fact it just doesn't play together nicely with its accompanying italic style backslash it. There still are multiple ways of stylizing text, but they are all well supported and correctly coincide with the mode they are being used in. Like double asterisk in markup mode to bold the text, but you could also use the options provided inside the text function. You often hear this referred to as syntactic sugar. Then there's also the functions for styling text inside the math environment. Font change. I don't like to tarnish the default computer modern font, but in case you want to change it in LaTeX, it's not the easiest thing to do. Especially if you want another font for a part of your document. The same goes for applying mathematical fonts. Changing the default Libertin serif font is very easily achievable throughout various parts of the document and separately for mathematical fonts. Quotes. You would write them as single quotes, angle brackets, or more likely, if you use a differently styled quoting, you would have a macro in the preamble setup to write quotes with. Quotes automatically just based on the text function's language. Ellipses. Depending on how you write ellipses, they happen to ignore spaces. The ellipses can be written without the need of a command, and are for once respecting the spaces put before and after. Mathematics. How to insert. Beginners will probably choose the officially unsupported dollar signs, because they're faster to write than backslashes with different brackets. This is especially true for non qwerty keyboard layers. Only one way of writing maths, which is with simply using the dollar signs. Alignment and equation labeling. Many alignment environments for maths exist, mostly coming from packages. This is to separate the use of inline and display math, as well as the toggle equation labeling. Math alignment is done inside when and only type of inline or display maths. This appears to have sort of limited the label's customization. While there are future plans to have such level of control over equation labeling in types 2, the Quake package alone appears to have solved quite a lot of that already. Symbols. 
Latex is probably the richest in collection of mathematical symbols across all of types thing, and the most common ones are written very shortly. For example, backslash neq and backslash dot eq. The notation goes like, for example, like to have equal sign and it dot not to have an equation. I vouch for this kind of systematic approach as it makes it extensible to many variants. This exact example is fairly confusing at first, at least coming from LaTeX, because the order of Ekin not is reversed from what you are used to. But what's more amazing is that even the programmer's inequality, known after its exclamation mark, is a completely valid of displaying an equation and can be found as a so-called shorthand within all the catalogued symbols. To top it off, a single Unicode character can also suffice. Common operators. It's not uncommon that you have to define your own mathematical operators, such as the differential operator, a couple of European names for trigonometric functions, and pair delimiters. They're largely built into types. Units. Mass mode can contain phrases longer than a character. If you're not very used to LaTeX, this can then, for example, lead to slanted units. As in physical quantities, which are supposed to be upright. Normally, this is therefore done by enclosing them in a backslash math rm backslash text or by introducing a package such as si unit x. Type treats anything longer than a character as a variable name and in cases when you don't want it to be, you are forced to decide whether you want it as a word or a new mathematical operator. Decimal separators. Decimal points are the default but can be changed with a package like si unit x. There are packages like zero available to change the decimal separator from a point to a comma but also a simple reject solution from the currently open GitHub issue is still completely functional. Vector arrows. Extending of a script vector arrows to fit the length of any word is possible, however the harpoon shapes require a package. Unless the font doesn't support it, vector arrows or harpoons that fit the length of any word can be achieved with simple commands. Programming. Code blocks. Highlighted code snippets are possible through different packages, meaning you can greatly customize them. Code blocks are done the same way they are in Markdown, and changing the color scheme through the raw functions options is also not too difficult. But it's also true that so far the packages for more advanced customization are lacking, like manipulating how much of the starting indentation you want. Involvement within type setting. The programming side of it is rarely utilized, and its syntax is not the most user friendly. The lack of data types surprisingly makes it tedious to read out values from a table in order to conditionally color in its cells. Solutions involving programming are commonly used to conditionally color in table cells. Notice also how environments are now referred to as functions. Miscellaneous. Installation. If you choose to use it offline, you're usually talking gigabytes. If you choose to use it offline, the types compiler is all you need. Compilation. Compilation times are slower. Compilation times are much quicker. Generated files. Generate at least aux, log, PDF and .syncTick.gz files upon compilation, updates the preview upon compilation, and only generates PDF when demanded. This of course depends on your editor setup. Various. Error messages can be difficult to decode, but are easily searchable online. They also come at once, but I feel like this means there's less hiding being done in front of you. I wouldn't necessarily say the error messages are more useful, but at least they gather in smaller bundles. Again, this means the logs are nowhere to be found to a regular user. Templates. The preamble is rarely allowed to see among main contents. Therefore, templates can be made from the exact copy of the preamble. The preamble is more flexible, but templates are required to be built as functions. In my opinion, it makes more sense as any given template is then used with the same approach. Reads. They are usually achieved through the minibage environments which aren't the easiest to customize. Creds are created through either the grid or less semantically correct, the table function, and are a breeze to customize. 